Emma. I have a mom here. Uh, Diet Pepsi. That's why I drink. I like Diet Pepsi. Anyway. Uh. It's weird. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh. You know the voice on Skull? It's not affecting me like it would most people. And I'll tell you why. I have three seals. I have one on my mind that God put there. Now the reason he put a seal on my mind was to protect me from the voice on Skull. So far I saw a bug. You see my mom gave me bug spray. And guess what I saw? I saw a bug flying on the wall. And I saw one coming at me. And then it disappeared. That was voice on skull. It wasn't a real bug. Now with voice on skull, you have to be very careful. You can see all kinds of things fly at you if you're not careful. But the thing is, they're not able to master my mind or use it in voice on skull. Simply because a seal is like a lock. The seal, what it does is it locks your soul and mind and heart. It locks it so that they can't get in it. It's like a house with a lock on it. You can't get in that house unless you have the key or unless you live there. And that's how it works. See, it disallows them to do anything with my mind, period. They can't use it. They can't get in it. They can't control it like what they're talking about. They can't do anything with it. Because my mind is locked completely. And that's what I'm saying. I haven't had the problem most people have had with it because of that. You see, God is really good at locking things. And you can have them lock your mind. Just like anything else. And that helps. He is sealing his people. Uh, the other day I noticed mom and dad had seals. Uh, so God is getting ready for uh, Armageddon. Now the thing is, I learned that my third eye is open, which is my spiritual eye. So I can see spiritual things where most people can't. That's the difference. It doesn't make me a bad person or nothing. It just makes me able to see what most people can't spiritually. I can see spirits. I can see things like that that most people would not see. Which is, to me, is just like growing up when I was young. I saw my father-in-law before I ever got married when I was a kid. Growing up. You're sitting under my desk. <laughs> you see, it's something that I've lived with all my life and that I'm used to. So seeing what's not there is not bad. It's just a matter of getting used to it. Chapter 7 of Revelation, verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the tree, nor the sea, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That's what this is. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. There were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad, Gad were sealed 
12,000. These are all the children from Benjamin. And you see, Father Benjamin was my father. I, in Bible times. And that is why I am sealed. Because I'm one of the children from Bible times. Because my ancestors come from Bible times. You don't have to be a Jew to be sealed. That's what you have to realize. All God's children can be sealed. All God's children. That's the thing. If you're God's child, you can be sealed. I have tried to tell the churches that. And you know, sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a wall. They don't want to listen. But I know one church that did listen that I was able to help. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I saved, I really believe I saved a minister from walking down from his pulpit because he didn't know what to do. I have shown the way for several people and I'm trying my best, my very best. And yes, it is a difficult situation, but if you have a seal, if you're sealed by God and Christ, like I am, you won't be tortured. You won't be anything except God's child. And God will protect you. Because the seal is a helmet. That's what it is. And it protects you from any kind of torture. I'm serious. But it doesn't mean that the enemy won't send things our way to tempt us. He always will. That's just the way it is. And we have to trust God and Christ and not be tempted. Not allow ourselves to be tempted. When you judge people, you tempt God and Jesus. You should never judge a person. Because you don't know that person until you talk to them. Until you see them. And you have a chance to be with them. Like I said, maybe I'm preaching and I'm sorry if I am, but I'm a messenger. I'm a messenger from God, not a minister, just a messenger trying to get out the message. God loves all of us, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not be perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God came in this world to save it, not to condemn it. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye now.